Hello everybody and welcome to a new video tutorial from Dr. Lerias World and today we are going to talk about the powerful technology, ray tracing. And no, this is not thunder or lightning, ray tracing is a new and powerful technology that has been here to change everything. But in this video tutorial we don't talk about technical details, or that you have internet with a lot of information. So we are going to talk about the main benefit that this technology offers us in our projects in audiovisual production. We are talking about global illumination, high quality soft shadow, reflections, translucency, amine occlusion and all in real time. So for example, if you used to work in Unreal Engine or Unity, you really know what is the baking lighting process. So with this ray tracing technology in many cases you can forget it using ray tracing global illumination in real time and with a really great quality. And now we can work with amine occlusion and really high quality soft shadows and all in real time. If you are interested and you want to learn more please keep watching this video tutorial. And as I always say if you like it if you are learning please give me a like subscribe to my channel and let's start with the party. So people now we are here in Unreal Engine working with a simple interior theme. The main idea of this project is check the performance using ray tracing in Unreal Engine and with a great high quality assets. So the first thing we need to say is uh, starting a version 425 you can create a project and activate ray tracing at the beginning. And of course if you have an old project and you want to activate ray tracing it's really easy to do. So for that go to settings, project settings, right here ray tracing and check here ray tracing. And now also check for your RHI target and here you need to set it to DirectX 12. And now we're here working in unlit mode. I want to show you some parts of this model. Uh, as I told you, uh, we are working with uh, great quality assets. So let's look here in wireframe mode, this sofa. Um, every kind of parts of this modeling. Look at this curtain, for example, and these plants also. We are using high quality models. So this is what I want to show you about the performance and ray tracing. And now we're here in lead mode with ray tracing activated. As you can see here, our frame rate is going lower. And now also, I will explain you what's going on here with this light ligand. And also this simple thing, as you can see, we are using here an HDRI backdrop. Here we have our skylight, but in this case, I'm not using intensity. This because finally I decided to use two rec light to illuminate my steam. We got here both lights and now we uncheck it and now we are not using global illumination in ray tracing. Okay. And this is with the ray tracing global illumination activated. See we have here some correct lights and also some spotlights. And this is the most important part of ray tracing. Let's go to post process volume. And here as you can see we have all our rendered features with the ambient cube map, with the ambient occlusion also. And now here we have our ray tracing ambient occlusion. So now let's see what's going on in our ambient occlusion. Visualization buffer and here we have our ambient occlusion. Now we are seeing ambient occlusion with ray tracing activated. These are some of the parameters you can use, for example, the samples per pixels. Look at this here, really high quality. Also, you have intensity and also the radius. And now, this is the common ambient occlusion you have in Unreal Engine. Also, I can tell you that I know setting the parameters of the traditional ambient occlusion. Check it again. And this is the ray tracing ambient occlusion. This is really nice and really high quality. And now we talk about the samples per pixels. Now we are here using 32 value. So this is the amount of samples that ray tracing works per pixels. So now we're gonna set this value to 1. As you can see it's flickering a little bit. So for example let's set this value to 16. And everything is going softer with a really good quality. And talking about the performance, it's really important that you check your frame rate every time that you change a parameter like that. Okay, and now we are here in lead mode again and let's talk about the global illumination. We have here our ray tracing global illumination. And for example here we have some parameters like uh, type, max bones and also samples per pixel. We check disable and now we are not using global illumination. Okay, 
Now we are in Final Gather, this is a type of ride racing global illumination, it offers a great performance but as you can see for example in some parts there are sunlight leaking and this is more like a preview mode. So for example when you are working with your thing, with your lights and you want to check everything how it's working, you can use this kind of ray tracing global illumination and you can do it in a quick way. Also you need to keep in mind when you are working with this type, the final gather, you have the samples per pixel but the maximum value will be 16. Now we're gonna check here with a value like 1, everything is noisy and light leaking, so if we check for example 16, this is more clear and now for example with 32, um, let's try also with uh, 64, it's the same. So for now in this version the maximum value you can use with final gather is 16. Now we're gonna try the brute force type, this is a more quality ray tracing global illumination type. And let's move here, and as you can see now it's going slower, but we have really more quality. So let's try for example putting to 64, but also you need to be careful because this may be crash your computer, so this is going to be the setting for checking and exporting our project. Now in the other side let's talk about the reflections. If you remember this wall about box reflection, sphere reflections, uh, planar reflections, now you can forget it. Now we are using a screen spade reflections. Okay, look at this here, these metals. And now we check for ray tracing reflections. This is really another world. So let's try again. Let's check for a screen space and ray tracing reflections really nice, crisp and high quality reflections. And also please check your performance and check your frame rate, ok? And of course we don't use screen space reflection parameters, so we use ray tracing reflections and here we have the max rock next value. So let's put it to the minimum value and we try with a value like uh, 0 0.6 or also 0 0.5. Let's check here, for example, in our frame rate. Okay. This is more efficient when we talk about performance. If we compare, for example, to ray tracing global illumination. And also we go closer to these metals. Uh, let's check for our max bounces. So let's put into and check here. This is the number of bones of our reflections. In this case what you need to think is what kind of camera shot I want to do. So for example here we can use a value like 1, ok, and if we go closer, like in this kind of shot, you can set it to 2 for example, or maybe 3, this depending of the quality you want to get. Now we are going to check for our sample per pixels, but but we are going to see this value in our kitchen. Ok. And look at this glossiness metal I am using on the fridge. So we check our samples per pixel, we got it in 8. And look at this. Now we have really nice reflections, but it also costs too much for the performance. So the best thing what you can do for example with this kind of value is check your thing, you can still working with a value like 1. And what you want to do your final render, you can set it in a higher value. Ok, and now let's talk about the translucency. Now we have set our ray tracing translucency. And check it here to raster. Ok. Let's go back again to ray tracing. Look at this. More quality. Look at this here also. Ok, this in raster. This could be a problem about the material and also and also it could be something about our mesh. The material is looking good, so maybe this could be something about the mesh, but I don't care about it. And now here we are going to see our max reflection rates. We got it in one. Let's increase two, three, four. Okay. Also, it's recommended that you check this value with your material. 
Okay, and now I have forgotten to check this parameter shadows. Okay, now we got it in hard shadows, so we're gonna try with area shadows. And now as you can see, all our shadows are more softer with hard shadows. You got it harder. And look at this, but maybe when you set it in area shadows, it's too noisy. So this is another parameter you can set it in your reflections. And now let's check with this one, include translucent objects. Okay, and now maybe here with my TV, I lose my reflection because I have uh, some overlapped meshes. But this is really easy to understand. If you check it, you include all your translucent objects in your reflections. And let's check again our right tracing translucency. And we're gonna check for our shadows. Look at this for example. Now we are using the area shadows. Okay. And let's check it with hard shadows. Okay. And this is the refraction. Now the material is almost black, but if we are increasing our max reflection rays, now you can see, for example, how is working the refraction. This also depending of the parameters you are using in your materials. Okay, so now we have seen the parameters you can use for ray tracing in your post-process volume. If you are familiar with Unreal Engine, you know you can use your output, okay? And you have hundreds of parameters you can adjust with ray tracing. Now, talking about the lighting, as we have seen at the beginning of this video tutorial, we are using a red light. And you can use, for example, this parameter, it's called samples per pixel for your lighting. This will increase the overall shadow quality of your light. And now we're gonna do something. Let's place here a directional light. We're gonna set it like here, okay. Now it's immovable with some parameters set it by default, but I want to show you these parameters. It's cast ray tracing shadows, affect ray tracing reflections, and affect ray tracing global illumination. I need to tell you also that these parameters are available in all of Kino Lights. So let's uncheck all ray tracing shadows, reflections, and global illumination. And now we are not using ray tracing with this directional light. Let's check it again. Global illumination, reflections as you can see here, and shadows. And now let's go to this part. This is the source angle of our light. And with this slider you can do your shadow more smoother, more crisp. Look at this here. We are using a higher volume. We can put it for example in 100, 20, 1. So this parameter is depending on what kind of shadows you want to see in your theme. So let's go back again using our rec lights. This is because I want to view really soft shadows in my theme. So I decide to use these kind of lights. And now we are trying also with ray tracing shadows and ray tracing reflections. We put it in off and also with the global illumination. And these are rec lights with no ray tracing. Let's check it again. And now we have here all working in ray tracing mode. And now something is really important. If you want to work with ray tracing, I would recommend to use a GPU that fully supports ray tracing. Be careful if you are working with an old graphic card because like that you don't get a great performance. So people, here we are at the end of the first part of this video tutorial. And we have seen some of the main parameters we can use using ray tracing in Unreal Engine. In the next part of this video tutorial, we're gonna do it in a different way. We will open some projects and we are going to see deeper how to work with ray tracing. As I say, if you like it, if you are enjoying, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you in the next part. Bye bye.